And here we go. We are live once again. Um, I apologize for earlier the um, technical difficulties we're having. Uh, it turns out that I forgot to um, reboot my system as I usually normally do uh, every time uh, that I start broadcasting. Uh, again, uh, je suis désolé de le, les, les, les uh, problématiques um, techniques que j'ai eu tantôt. Uh, C'est réellement que j'ai totalement oublié de repartir mon système comme que je fais d'habitude avant, de, avant de, 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 de faire une diffusion en direct comme ceci. Uh, et C'est aussi pourquoi je t'avoue que uh, depuis qu'on s'en va de plus en plus vers le, 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 les épisodes en ligne, Uh, tout le monde fait du télévideo, téléconférence en tant, en tant que tel. Et puis, uh, c'est pour ça que je veux aussi procéder plus um, ou couper un peu uh, de la, la, la matière que je fais en direct versus préenregistré. Uh, c'est sûr que um, c'est plus facile, um, de, de, ben, plus facile, c'est plus, plus net, c'est plus propre. Hi Mark, welcome. Um, quand on fait de la pré-enregistrée, pré vu que tu sais, on peut découper toutes les erreurs que je fais et tout ça. Euh, puis justement, je pense que j'ai avec les, les diffusions en direct, ça m'a donné quand même assez de, de motivation de, de partir ces, ces, euh, ces épisodes-là et la chaîne en tant que telle de YouTube et aussi le groupe euh, Facebook. Um, so basically, just, just to recap, what I was just saying is that. Um, This is one of the reasons why I've also uh, cut down on the um, live streams that I've been doing is because live streaming takes a lot of uh, resource uh, on the computer, on the internet, uh, and seeing that we've already uh, been in, you know, with this confinement for the last uh, uh, two and a half to three months, a lot of people are using more of the internet. Uh, we know very well that, you know, just in the last couple of months, Uh, our internet um, structure is, is is going to have to, our internet providers are going to have to deal with um, the traffic that we're creating now uh, with this confinement, even though uh, cities are starting to open up. Uh, we're still doing a lot more uh, teleconferencing. We're doing a lot more um, uh, online uh, learning. Uh, so a lot, um, in my case, teaching. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to start, to, and, and I mean, it, it, it's, it's about time too that our infrastructure uh, uh, towards the internet uh, has, a, has an upgrade uh, as far as quality and bandwidth. Uh, bonjour Lynn, hello Lynn, uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank you guys for, uh, for catching me. I know I'm uh, rather late this uh, evening, um, but as we're having a lot of technical difficulties, um, I've also uh, re re uh, retrieved um, my episode that I did earlier this afternoon. I was having so many problems with bandwidth and with the, with uh, with my machine over here that I had to. I totally forgot to restart my system before, um, and I usually always start from a clean boot uh, whenever I do my uh, direct, uh, or I should say, my live feeds like this. Hi, Lolo. I see you there. <laughs> um, so. Today's episode, which I'm do totally doing over from scratch uh, now, we'll be doing it now with, um, to replace the episode of this afternoon, which really went to the pot today. Fait que cet, cet épisode aujourd'hui, c'est exactement, c'est l'évaluation de justement euh, notre défi hebdomadaire de cette semaine qui était justement capturer les ombres et on a quelques quelques soumissions euh, à notre à, à notre défi euh, que je vais repartir du début euh, justement euh, ce soir. Uh, so tonight we're going to be I'm, I'm, this is a complete rehash of what I did tried to do earlier uh, with all the problems that I was having uh, with my uh, system and with and with the internet uh, this afternoon. Uh, we're going to start from scratch, from the beginning, uh, and do a clean um, reboot of this episode. Uh, so we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to look at the photos that were submitted uh, by the group uh, for uh, capturing shadows. 
And also, I'm going to introduce next week's challenge, um, which is going to be, uh, well, we'll get to that in, in, a, in a moment. Uh, and um, next Tuesday, I will say this, I picked a subject to talk about next Tuesday, as I've been getting quite a bit of uh, requests to talk about um, restoring photographs. Uh, so over the over the confinement, uh, I myself have scanned. Um, actually, we have two boxes of, of of prints here that we've accumulated over the years. Um, as a matter of fact, over the years, when I say over the years, you know, Sunday's going to be my fiftieth, so. <laughs> There's been a lot of years behind me. Um, I'm going to talk about scanning. I'm going to talk about, uh, but most of all, I'm also going to be talking about um, how you can re restore images uh, from the scan prints uh, or scan negatives, uh, for that matter, uh, which will be happening on um, Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to be, the live episode will be at uh, 8 p.m., okay? Uh, unless things change, it should be at 8 p.m., no problem. I'll be setting it up tomorrow um, so that the, uh, well, the pre-entry will already be in my YouTube channel. And uh, welcome, Ted Shields. Um, I do do film photography, yes. As a matter of fact, if you look right behind me here, one of the my film, my film, uh, my film cameras here is a 4x5 um accordion it's uh, this is I believe is a 1990 I think it's a 1993 or 1992 it's Japanese made but I still do uh, 35 millimeter uh, photography uh, as I still have my Minolta XD11 which is the original um, actually well the original it's not the original but it's the original model that I had started doing photography uh, when I was uh, oh, about 10 years old actually, uh, in the um, late 70s, early 80s. And I, and I also have a Bronica, uh, two and a quarter, uh, that I pull out once in a while. So, yeah, I do do, I do, do film. I develop it myself if I'm, uh, in the black and white. Uh, otherwise, at my work, I have uh, my color films developed there, and then I scan them myself, either using a flatbed scanner, which you can see over my left shoulder, uh, or I also have a um, automated scanner that I can... Just put in, you know, four by sixes up to eight, up to about eight by tens, eight by twelves, um, that I use there, which is basically the same thing that we do at the lab uh, where I work. But enough about that. That we'll be looking at that on on uh, on Tuesday night. Tonight, let's get back to um, excusez, just pour uh, uh, recapituler qu'est-ce que je viens de dire, c'est que uh, mardi uh, mardi soir vers, uh, à huit heures. Euh, 20 heures exactement, euh, je vais parler de la restauration de photos, que ce soit négatif ou que ce soit euh, des, des impressions euh, qui sont numérisées, puis comment les, les, les restaurer euh, en travers Photoshop et Lightroom pour l'exposition et correction de, de, de défauts euh, qu'on trouve toujours sur les, euh, sur les scans, euh, puis aussi d'expliquer de, 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 un peu la, 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 les qualités qu'on qu'on doit s'attendre versus qu'est-ce qu'on pense qu'on devrait avoir en fonction d'une numérisation. Euh, N'oublie pas que, tu sais, euh, moi, en temps, en temps réel, moi, j'ai des photos qui datent de, de, de 40 ans, de 40 ans, que c'est sûr et certain, avec une, une, une détérioration euh, sur le papier, sur les négatifs, mais je vais vous montrer quelques trucs pour les restaurer, pour les ramener à neuf. Euh, peu importe l'âge de la, la, la photo. J'en ai fait des restaurations de photos de les 1920, des 1880 aussi, les 1900. Euh, c'est très intéressant, c'est très, très, très... Euh, c'est une aventure, a, a, aventure euh, de faire la, la restauration de photos. Puis, normal, puis, puis je t'avoue que c'est souvent, pas normalement, mais souvent euh, très intéressant de, 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 de restaurer ces, euh, ces photos-là. So, uh, that's for Tuesday. Ça, c'est pour mardi. Today, we are talking about uh, capturing shadows. So, here we have our Facebook group. And 
Um, as you can see here, some um, we have a f couple of photos that have been directly uh, input into our, uh, tra who've been um, transferred into our album for uh, this week's uh, challenge number eight, which is capturing shadows, uh, capturer des ombres. So let's start with our first images here in the album, where we have uh, Miss Karen uh, Dolce, who submitted this uh, fantastic, uh, I would go as far as to say uh, monochromatic uh, image, where we see how, you know, the focus has been put on the shadows themselves. Um, it, 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 it portrays a very, very dynamic, a very contrasty image. Um, I love the idea of using the Cheerios that have been just, look like they've been randomly dropped uh, onto the tabletop. Um, I would like to know how she got the blue in there because if you look at the uh, right bottom corner, we can see that it's in black and white, but there's a tinge here of, of, of blue purple here in the shadows. Um, also, um, the fact that the, 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 the shadows, and this is, you know, I mean, that's what the whole uh, challenge was, was to photograph shadows in themselves. Like you see on a très belle uh, photo des ombrages uh, créés par uh, la lumière uh, projetée sur les, 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 les céréales que vous voyez ici, les, les, les Cheerios. Et puis, um, la mise au point est réellement faite sur le, sur le, le, le top du table. Parce qu'on voit très bien que, tu sais, où ce que les ombrages, c'est bien, bien net. La lumière est un peu dure, c'est vrai. Euh, mais c'est ça, la, la lumière dure, qui fait que euh, les ombrages sortent si bien euh, définis ici dans cette photo-là. Miss Karen, fantastic job on this image. Um, you really grasp the concept of, of, of shooting the shadows. We're going to go on to our next image here where she used a teardrop crystal um, hanging as a pendulum uh, from a string. Now, in this particular image here, um, Mrs. Dolce decided to put the focus on the gem, even though we see in negative space the shadow. Um, I'm just wondering if it might have been a little bit more interesting if the shadow was the focal point versus the gem, and having the gem itself... Uh, slightly blurred because having that shadow having the the focal point on the shadow all of these glitters here all of these um, sparkles of light projected by the uh, gem itself would might actually have produced more clear um, hues of the rainbow here in the in the uh, in the uh, glitters projected by that gem um, otherwise, the composition is very well. I, I like the composition, the fact that, you know, you have, you've balanced both the shadow and the gem in your, in your image. Um, I think it works very well. Uh, good go. Um, fantastic image. Thank you very much for your submission. Here we have an image um, <clears throat> from Mark. And uh, Mark can confirm this, but this is obviously a montage. Um, that he probably did within uh, Facebook, uh, no, so, sorry, I don't know where I'm talking about Facebook, uh, in Photoshop, um, we know that this is uh, a double exposure, so we have our subject here who's in the shadow, who's a silhouette, uh, a very, a rather uh, dim silhouette, um, and the makeup uh, accessories here that were probably used in um, doing the makeup on this particular model. It's a nice concept. It's nice. It's a nice uh, image. Um, I don't know where the story is in the sense that... Okay. I just saw Mark's comment here. Girl on front. Salfions. Okay. Are you shooting through something here or are you just... Uh, but, uh, backlighting this subject um, although it's it's a very interesting co uh, 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 concept um, there's a lot of stuff going on in this image mark <laughs> I'm still lost in your in your chat texts there 
Um, but um, it's a good it's a good uh, good go at it. Um, again, there's a lot going on in this image. I'm just wondering if there's a little bit too much going on in this image. I I see where you've worked the image using you know. Um, but again, you know this partic this type of image here for me is more of a um, graphic artist uh, being the way that it's been uh, in set up in this particular uh, shot here. So um, good going, Mark. And uh, you know, enjoy the um, using a soft box. Okay, girl on front, soft box. Okay. It's marketing for a commercial, I see. Again, um, good go, Mark. Nice concept. <laughs> it's still just a little bit busy. I don't know if you need that many brushes there. Um, and there's a couple that, you know, you could have maybe placed them more, orienting them more towards, like, for instance, the eyeliner. Uh, not the eyeliner, sorry, but the um, uh, eyelash brush and the... Uh, eyelash curler, maybe, you know, swap them over towards the eyes. But again, it all depends on what it is that you're trying to uh, put through here. Um, fantastic. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on to the next image now. I still like Mark's image uh, that he um, did last week that he sent us. Which happens to be the uh, the book with the with the uh, reading glasses, and again this is this is a really this is a really uh, good image of uh, how we could play with the shadows. Here we're Mark is using the the lens, the frame of the lens on the eyeglasses to create the heart here in the spine of the pages of the book. Here, uh, what I did notice here though, um, Mark, and what I wanted to uh, it, it's just a little bit underexposed in that the pages are are are, are rather brown. Okay, um, it could be your 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 white balance, but I'm pretty sure it's it's the exposure in itself. If you would have had a little bit more light on the book, your your um, here your your um, well the shadows of your frames might come out a little bit darker still. But you know just to have a little bit more contrast between your shadow and the pages of the book. It could very well be that the book had brownish, uh, had a brownish tinge to it. Um, it's just there's a little bit of light that could have been added here. I think, uh, either boosting the light or um, using a, sh a slower shutter speed or just a little bit more uh, aperture here, uh, or ISO in that in this case too. Um, but I love the setup. I love the way that you you place the glasses. It, it makes for a very very nice uh, sculpted shadow that you've created here. Fantastique idée ici, c'est de l'utiliser um, le livre en tant que tel. Puis ici, Marc a, a choisi à utiliser ses, euh, ses paires de lunettes, euh, d'après moi, de lecture, euh, pour faire l'ombrage le, 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 du cœur. Euh, ça marche très bien ici. Et puis, euh, on peut souvent, on peut aussi utiliser euh, soit une, euh, un bag, euh, je veux dire, une... une Voyons, une bague d'alliance ou euh, euh, fiançailles, euh, normalement, on va, on va la mettre tout de suite dans le milieu euh, du pli de, la li de le livre. Et puis, ça va nous faire exactement la même chose ici qu qu avec le cœur. Euh, fait que, bon, euh, bon essai ici, euh, Marc. Um, Lynn, yeah, it's, I, it's, I assume that it was, a, it was an older book. It just, it still needs a little bit more punch, a little bit more light. Uh, to bring this book out a bit more. Good job, good go. Let's go on to our next one here. So here we have Uncle Bob, my mentor. <laughs> the man who introduced me to photography at a very young age. Actually, at my son's age, uh, seven or eight years old. Uncle Bob was the one who uh, really sold me on photography. Uh, at a young age, and I did this, and this, this is where I, well, it's brought me to where I am today. Um, I love this image here. You can see the, 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 the contrast between the, um, what's in de dead sunlight, or, or I should say bright sunlight here in the, in the background with the stairs and the trees and the plants, and you can even see the, 
the, the, the, the, the couple in the background there. Um, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic photo. And this, and it's not because, uh, I mean, listen, you know, uncle Bob is, is, is probably got 20 years on me, uh, of photography, but he's, I mean, you know, this, this is something done in camera. There's nothing in, there's nothing here. And I know his photography. I know how he, how he, uh, I mean, I aspired to be, to be this, uh, on on the on the on the fly to be able to shoot this type of image uh, for years, uh, I remember uh, trying to aspire to to, to the level of of uh, knowledge that uh, Uncle Bob has in photography. And I just love the balance here, the fact that you have the um, the the wet floor sign here in the corner of the table. You know, even though there's, you see the, the, the camera up here with the, you know, everything is well balanced. So you've got the dome here and you've got the dome here. Um, it's just, it's just, you know, I mean, kudos to Uncle Bob. Very, I love the title too, Shadows on a Sunny Day. Um, it's a fantastic image. Thank you for your submission there, T. On to our next image. We have... Uh, wait, Karen, we already saw this one and this one here. So now we have John who's presented us. So here are some images uh, for weekly challenge number eight. Uh, they were all made with the Fuji X-T3 uh, um, and, uh, and the Fuji 100-400 lens. So, and I mean, that's that's exactly why I love this image too. It's a little bright, yes. The shadows are very um, um, subtle is the, is the word that I'm looking for. Um, but notice how that 100, 400 millimeter, that tele, telephoto lens really shortens everything and, and there's practically no depth, of, no depth of field, meaning that there's no blur. Uh, I mean, obviously... He's in. He's he's uh, well, uh, plongé. He's in. Uh, he's over the subject, but you'll notice that even though the subject is is properly in focus, th you can see the tiles in the floor. So the depth of field here is is is, is very very large. Um, in this particular image, I love the the time of day where you get these shadows here. You could probably say this is probably some time around three four maybe 5 p.m. The sun is not completely set yet. Uh, it's actually, it, it's it's still rather high in the sky. C'est un fantastic image ici. J'aime bien. C'est un peu, je dirais, un peu surexposé dans le sens que, tu sais, les blancs sont très, très blancs. Euh, malgré que, si vous regardez la, la, la photo, les tons de couleur qui sont là sont très, très proches un de l'autre, qui fait vraiment la contraste avec le photographe ici qui est en train de photographier quelque chose dans son champ de vision à lui. Um, et puis, on dirait que le, le, le temps euh, que cette photo a été prise, c'était probablement dans les 4 heures, 5 heures de, de, de l'après-midi, de soirée. Euh, tandis que les, les ombrages sont tellement euh, longs dans cette, dans cette photo-là. Good job, John. I love it. It's a fantastic image. I love the placing of your elements here with the with the fence and 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 the column here, um, which could also probably be a garbage, but I like let's just call it a column and your subject here. Everything I find is very well balanced. Everything leads to also to our subject taking his own photo there. Beautiful job. I love these types of images too. Again, this is using his 100 400, which is a fantastic image of a cyclist. And the sun being on the, and we can tell that this is very close to the golden hour because even though um, this person here has a tanned um, complexion, um, the light is still a little bit just on the orange side, the yellow orange side. Um, and I just love to see the shadows when they're five, six, seven times longer or larger than the actual subject who's projecting them. Um, Again, the sunlight here is very, very uh, lateral, uh, so it's probably, it's not at its lowest point in the horizon, but it's, it's close to it. It's probably about maybe 10 degrees off of the horizon, 10 to 12 degrees off the horizon to be able to get this large shadow over here. 
voici une très belle image euh, en fonction de l'ombrage qui est projeté par le sujet. Euh, le soleil est probablement, il n'est pas sur l'horizon encore, mais il est probablement dans le coin du 10-12 degrés, euh, juste, juste avant l'heure dorée en, en, en temps réel. Euh, on voit quand même que le, le, la qualité de lumière, elle est un peu jaunante, mais euh, les lignes sont encore blancs sur le, sur le trottoir qu'on qu voit là. So, again, John, another nice, another fantastic shot. I love the crop, I love the composition. Beautifully, uh, beautifully attained here. And again, we have another image here from John. I love this image personally. I was looking at it earlier this afternoon, and I just love the, the way that You can't really tell from the shadow what is casting the shadow. And obviously, the posture that this uh, gentleman here is taking, looking at whatever might be in the sand, might be a crustacean, might be an insect, or it might just be a shell um, that's, been, that's lodged in the sand uh, between his feet there. But the exposure is, is, is dead on. Um, nothing is too, you know, the whites are white, but they're not necessarily lost or blasted. Um, I just think that the exposure here was really well um, well achieved and that the um, it, it, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, John this was this was probably luck of the draw you were right there at the right time at the right moment um, the light was perfect and uh, I just kudos to you this is a beautiful shot. Euh, voici une très belle photo d'un monsieur qui est en train de regarder euh, quelque chose qui a capturé son, euh, son œil, probablement un, un, un crustacien ou un, un, un bébite qui, qui est peut-être dans, dans, dans le sable euh, ou un coquille en, en, en tant que tel. Euh, L'exposition ici est tellement bien euh, réussie que même les blancs ne sont pas éclatés. Euh, L'ombrage est quand même assez sombre pour qu'on voit un forme, on ne sait pas c'est quoi le forme, mais quand même, je trouve que ça, ça donne un peu de mystère aussi à la photo d'avoir de, 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 un, un ombre qui est assez abstrait, parce qu'on ne penserait pas nécessairement que ce serait une personne qui est en train de, de, de projeter cette, cet ombrage-là. Euh, le sou du, euh, du, du nageur, il est assez quand même assez noir, probablement assez réel à, qu -ce, que, à, 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 à qu ce que John a vu le moment qu'il a pris cette photo-là. Mais euh, bon bonne, bonne essai pour John. Fantastic job. Love the, um, love the, comp the, the, comp the, voyons, uh, the, the composition. Uh, the, the, it, you just, you were there at the right time and you, and you got the right shot. Fantastic job there. Let's see what else we've got. We've got, uh, here we got, there's Mark's uh, makeup artist. So fantastic, guys. Everything, uh, we've gone through all of the images so far. Beautiful shots. Uh, thank you for your submissions. Thank you for your, um, well, we're going to put this back on the front camera here. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation and your interest. Um, We're going to be talking now about next week's challenge. And I think next week's challenge will be very interesting for everybody. I was thinking that we could do a little bit of landscape photography now that um, our, uh, here locally at least, our um, confinement has more or less been lift, well, lifted to a certain, at a certain point at least. Uh, we can, you know, we can go out a little bit into the world. We started this week. This was our big week that we reopened uh, at the, at my work, at my shop, uh, at this town. We finally opened the doors on Monday, and we've been open since. Um, so I thought that be an, a nice idea now would be maybe to start doing a little bit of uh, landscape photography. And landscape photography, um, just pour revenir, euh, je pensais peut-être que pour ce euh, défi hebdomadaire qu'on pourrait jouer un peu dans le, 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 la photographie de paysage, euh, que ça soit du long exposition, que ça soit des... Euh, à un moment donné, on va faire juste du long exposition, on va faire juste des, des couchers de soleil, euh, mais on va, on va rouvrir le, 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 le général, euh, c'est-à-dire le, le, le généralisme, je ne sais pas si ça se dit, mais euh, le généralistic. Uh, category of, of landscape photography. So, you know what? We're going to make it so that you can do 
whether it's urban landscape, whether it's nat na uh, natural landscape, um, whether it's sunsets, whether it's maritime, um, whether it's long exposure, short exposure, doesn't make a difference. I'm just going to throw out landscape for now. Uh, later on, we'll start doing stuff a little bit more precise as far as techniques for landscape photography, black and white landscapes. However, we, 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 we'll, we'll look at that later on. Uh, so, je pense qu'aujourd'hui, c'est ça, on va parler un peu de le, 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 la photographie de paysage. Qu'est-ce qu'on s'attend à voir dans un paysage? Euh, que ça soit urbaine, que ça soit nature, que ça soit coucher de soleil. Um, and I pulled up a couple of websites that talks about little bit, uh, the, the, the little ticks, uh, tips and tricks, sorry, ticks and trips. Uh, ticks, well, <laughs> tips and tricks, uh, and things to keep in mind when doing landscape photography. Uh, so I got a couple of websites that we can look at uh, now to give us some ideas. And I also uh, went and um, called up some images to give you ideas also of uh, some landscape phot photography. So let's look at some of the images first and see uh, what we can do using or photographing landscapes. So if you wanted to do something that was a uh, long exposure, um, long exposure, you've got this type of photography here that, whoops, it's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was this here. Fait que voici un, un très bel euh, exemple d'une longue exposition en utilisant un, un, euh, un ruisseau ici pour y aller chercher la qualité de, de, de flou de l'eau en mouvement. Qui, qui donne un, un genre de, de, de qualité de l'étité euh, de l'eau à cause de passage de temps. Puis, le, le, puis on voit même dans les nuages ici, euh, ça, ça, a quand même, ça a été quand même une un assez longue exposition pour y aller chercher cette qualité de mouvement dans les, dans les nuages et sur l'eau en tant que telle. So if you look here, uh, this, is, this is a beautiful little creek. Um, where uh, the photographer took this in a long exposure, and you can see the quality of that milkiness of the of the moving water coming off of the uh, sh the chute here and into the little pond. You can also see the same in the in the um, now. Typically, when you're doing a shooting an image like this, uh, you typically need to use what we call uh, neutral density filters. Pour cette style de photographie là, n'oubliez pas que Euh, dans ce cas ici, ça prend réellement des filtres de densité neutre. Et justement, les filtres de densité neutre, ce sont des filtres qui sont euh, fortement noirs ou très gris foncé, ok, pour couper la, la lumière. Si vous regardez quand même ici cette photo-là, and it's very important that, you know, landscape photography, you want everything from that foreground right to the background, you want that all to be sharp. And about, and I'll be honest with you, those are the only types of photographs, be it a natural landscape, urban landscape, or even architecture, where typically you want that whole image to be sharp. Okay, normally when we're doing portraits, when we're doing environmental portraits, we always want to introduce a certain amount of blur to the background so that we, we really separate the subject from the background uh, that's behind them. Um, so this is a perfect example of a long exposure. So, voici un très bon exemple de, de, de longue exposition. Uh, puis, oublie pas que en paysage, ce qu'on ce qu cherche à voir, c'est toujours d'avoir la netteté complète dans l'image. Uh, puis, je vais vous montrer uh, quelques petits trucs pour aller chercher la bonne mise au point. Puis, de où vous devez couper votre avant-plan pour que ça soit net au complet. On va retourner voir d'autres. Photo. Ici, voici un autre. Regardez cette photo-là avec les montagnes. Ça, c'est fantastique. C'est avec le, 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 la lumière, la parasite, euh, la lumière parasite qu'on voit ici, là, parce que le, le soleil est juste sur le bord de l'objectif, euh, mais on voit très, très bien. Um, yeah, this is a beautiful image. Uh, even, you know, yes, there are horses in this, in this image, but we, you know, you got to ask yourself, and, and, and when you're composing an image like this, you've got to ask yourself, you know, how do I shoot the image where the, like, this is, this, the story here is the environment. It's, 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 it's the landscape. It's the, it's the three mountain ranges. 
Uh, you know, it's the field. Yes, there are horses here. But understand, too, that the horses are not the main subject. The main subject here are the mountains. Okay? So, yes, you can have, you know, you can have, you know, and, and this is a big argument specifically when it comes to photo clubs. You know, um, and, you know, you can't be uh, holier than the Pope when it comes to, 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 to categorizing photos either. Um, you know, and I know there are people out there, well, this is not a landscape photog uh, photograph because of the fact that there are horses here. And I'll argue this till, till I'm blue in the face. You know, you don't have to be holier than the Pope. The image and the story of this photograph is a landscape. Yes, there are, um, you know, there are organic beings in this uh, image, but they are not this story. They take up so such a small area of this image. The, the, this is, you know, the, the, the story here is really the landscape itself. Okay, I mean the poor the horses are, are grazing. That's probably their their home, for, you know. Um, but in this particular image, in this particular case, um, this for me is still considered uh, a landscape uh, photograph. And and this is sometimes where we lose, you know, we lose our eye on the ball when it starts when we start arguing. Yeah, but you know, there's horses or there's people here or there's you know there's birds. There's there's an eagle you know, that's flying right up over here, you know, listen, this is still a landscape image, okay, c'est ça, je sais pas, wow, écoute, qu'est-ce que je suis en train de dire ici, je vais faire la traduction si je l'ai pas faite, puis si je l'ai faite, ben c'est une deuxième fois, pour moi encore, ça c'est une photo paysage quand même, que il y a des chevaux dans l'avant-plan, mais comprenez aussi que c'est d'avoir les chevaux tellement petits et, et de prendre tellement peu de place sur cette image-là, ce sont des, 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 des sujets euh, secondaires et, et, et euh, en anglais, on peut dire euh, tertiary euh, subjects here. Mais c'est-à-dire que ces sujets des chevaux-là euh, ne parlent pas assez fort dans cette photo pour enlever pour l'enlever de la catégorie de paysage. Okay. Puis, you know, paysage, c'est aussi naturel à son environnement. Si, si, si dans cet environnement-là, il y a beaucoup de fermes, you know, c'est sûr et certain, on va les inclure. Euh, on ne va pas mettre l'emphase dessus, mais peut-être on va l'inclure pour dire que euh, peut-être ces chevaux-là mangent euh, la, la végétation euh, dans ce coin-là. Regardez cette photo, ça, c'est une belle photo aussi. Also, Feel free if you want to try doing panoramic images. So if we look at, I did it again. So if we look at this image here, it's a little bit oblong, uh, oblong in the sense that, you know, this looks more like a 16 by 9, but you can see how it's it's very elongated. And this could be a panoramic image, uh, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, panoramics can be a little bit complicated because you, you it all depends on how you shoot the image. I do my panoramics uh, manually. Um, so I shoot individual images and then I, I put them through another software, could be Lightroom, could be Photoshop. Um, I use PT GUI, uh, where I, I, I take all of the images and, and then the software will stitch them all together to be able to do that. But there's a whole technique behind that. Um, so feel free to try doing a panoramic uh, landscape if you like. Uh, they're not that hard and, and, and a lot of the cameras today, uh, except the very high-end cameras, uh, will have uh, an automated uh, function for you to be able to do a landscape, uh, sorry, a panoramic landscape like this. But notice how, I mean, you know, everything here is sharp. Where, wherever you look, very there's just a little bit, à peine, il y a juste un petit peu qui est peut-être, um, le mise au point, il est un peu flou. Mais quand on la regarde, principalement de l'avant-plan jusqu'à le milieu, jusqu'à l'infini, tout est les net. OK? So, euh, ça, c'est une très bonne euh, idée. Si vous jamais vous voulez faire des panoramiques, soit manuellement ou euh, si vous l'utilisez, les, les, les fonctions euh, H, euh, pas HDR, excusez, euh, panoramiques dans les appareils, qui, qui, les fonctions automatiques qui viennent avec les appareils, 
euh, n'hésitez pas, essayez-le. Euh, C'est une autre façon de voir des paysages et de, de, de faire des paysages très intéressants. Fait que voici euh, un autre exemple là. Si on va plus loin... Euh, tu regarde celui-là ici. Puis, you know, soyez pas peur non plus de d'utiliser l'avant-plan pour mettre une échelle en fonction de la distance de qu'est-ce qui est plus loin, ou aussi la grandeur. D'avoir les petits roches ici aussi, ça nous montre à quel point que les, 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 les montagnes sont assez longs, euh, sorry, assez longs, assez profonds, mais aussi assez hauts. Euh, puis les réflexions aussi. Euh, tu sais, dans ces, dans ces moments-là, euh, vous pouvez utiliser, dans ces moments-là, dans ces, ces, euh, ces situations-là, euh, souvent, on peut utiliser un polarisant pour sortir plus encore les réflexions dans l'eau ou pour totalement les enlever aussi si je, pour voir quest ce que ça donnerait. Here's another very nice example of a, uh, well, this is a sunset. Um, and, um, you know, even though the colors might be a little bit, you know, on the pushed side, um, you know, here's a perfect example of using your, your foreground to put into context your your main uh, subject here, which are the mountains. So, you know, having this, this foreground here, and then, you know, it's up to the photographer of how much of the, of the foreground do you need. But having these rocks shows a scale of how tall these mountains are and how far away they are. Uh, these, this rock here is probably at 10 feet, uh, maybe, you know, maybe I'd say between 6 and 12 feet from the photographer, from the camera. Um, but it's a it's a, it's a beautiful uh, having this 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 foreground here uh, gives us a great scale of you know how far we are from the mountains and how high the mountains are around us. So here's some pretty good uh, examples of um, landscape photography. Uh, we were, we're probably not going to find this here and around Montreal, around Quebec City, uh, around Laval, but. We can come close uh, using um, and 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 again, if you're if you're in you know the metropolis, you know, do a do a do an urban photo uh, photograph. Uh, I mean, do an ur urban photograph, an urban landscape, uh, meaning just you know as, as as far a landscape, as far as the buildings around you, um, that can also be uh, that can also be considered a landscape, be it an urban landscape. Okay. Uh, let's take a look and see what uh, some photographers here suggest for um, shooting for, uh, landscape photography. Here we have Spencer Cox, who um, <clears throat> his first tip here is to flip your photos horizontally. Okay, so looking at, uh, at these particular images here, you'll notice that he's cropped the images much more condensed to see if there's something within the images that's more interesting uh, to shoot horizontally versus vertically okay and if you look here this is this is an image from Ansel Adams um, and Ansel, Ansel Adams actually he, he used mostly what he used was an 8x10 camera so the negative was actually 8 inches by 10 inches in, uh, in uh, height and um, Sometimes what Ansel Adams would do is he would bring the he, he would crop the photo either vertically or horizontally to see which elements were more um, evident in 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 the composition that he was looking for. So you see dans ce cas ici, c'est que le um, well. Um, Ansel Adams, qu'est-ce qu'il faisait, c'est qu'en utilisant son 8 par, euh, son 8 par 10, et puis euh, je t'avoue que techniquement, normalement, le 8 par 10 était toujours vertical, euh, mais il, il mettait sur le côté pour être capable d'aller chercher plus horizontal aussi. Euh, fait que, tu sais, gardez-le, juste l'effet de le garder dans une différente, euh, pas une direction, mais une différente format, euh, horizontal versus vertical, ça peut faire sortir euh, un certain détail dans l'image que vous voulez peut-être attraper mieux euh, d'une façon ou de l'autre. Okay? Ça, c'est une bonne 
une bonne euh, astu euh, astuce-là. Euh, L'autre chose aussi, c'est que euh, quand on fait des panoramas, comme je vous avais montré, un bon euh, technique euh, à faire, puis je t'avoue que moi, je l'utilise souvent quand je fais mes panoramiques, euh, et puis aussi quand je fais mes, mes HDR, euh, peu importe, parce que, euh, ben, c'est-à-dire que qu'est-ce que je fais, c'est que la première photo dans la séquence, pour, dé, pour que je sache dans la sélection de mes photos euh, où ça commence puis où ce que ça finit, qu'est-ce que je vais faire, c'est que je vais mettre un doigt qui est mon, mon doigt d'index gauche pour commencer. Ça, ça veut dire que la photo après ça, c'est la première photo dans la, 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 la prise pour le montage du HDR ou du panoramique. Et puis, après que j'ai fait toutes mes photos, je prends une dernière photo avec mon doigt, mon doigt droite pointé dans le cadrage pour indiquer que entre ces deux photos-là, c'est là où ce que, oups, entre ces deux photos-là, euh, ça, 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 ça délimite la séquence de photos que j'ai prise pour ce montage-là. Fait que ça, c'est encore une très bonne euh, pratique. Uh, a very good technique when doing either panoramics or HDRs. Is we call it uh, using bookend photos. And basically what it is, is you can either use both of your hands or you can use just your index finger. So what I do is just before I'm ready to shoot my first image, I put one index finger, which is my left one, to uh, literally point to the first image in the sequence of images that I'm going to use in the panoramic or in the HDR. And then I finish, after I finish my last shot, I add an extra photo with my other finger, my right finger pointed left to tell me that between these two fingers, that's the sequence of photos that I'm using. Not using the photo, not using the, 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 the actual uh, photos with my hands in them or my fingers, It's just to tell me that the photo after this one and the photo before this one, that's my sequence. Okay, so that's a very good technique uh, when using uh, or when doing HDR, HDR and panoramic images. The other thing also, another tip uh, that, 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 that helps a lot in uh, landscape photography uh, is that, you know, it's not always showing up, setting up, and shooting that you're going to get your image. Sometimes you have to be patient. C'est-à-dire que souvent, en paysage surtout, parce que un paysage peut très vite devenir plate. Euh, dans le sens que, tu sais, en paysage, normalement, c'est pas nécessairement le, 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 d'arriver au moment que vous arrivez puis vous allez avoir la photo que vous, que, que vous voulez avoir. Euh, des fois, il faut avoir de la patience puis puis, il faut attendre peut-être un 10 minutes ou un 15 autres minutes ou voir si la lumière change, voir si quelque chose d'autre euh, se produit euh, en fonction de le météo, en fonction de la lumière, en fonction de même le, le mouvement des éléments qui sont dans l'image que je suis en train de euh, créer moi-même. Uh, so, you know, wait for patterns of, and it could be weather, it could be light, it could also be moving subjects. Uh, in the image that you're shooting, whether it be waves, whether it be waterfalls, you know, don't just show up, set up, and start shooting. Look for different aspects that can be uh, represented in that landscape photograph. And in this particular case here, you'll notice the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rain, um, rainbow that we see here on the horizon. Uh, not on the horizon, but in the... Uh, in the um, in the background, sorry. Another tip over here that we that uh, that uh, Mr. Cox is uh, suggesting here is embrace the refining process. Okay, one of my main methods of taking landscape photographies is something I like to call refining process. Okay, your time in the field is your best chance to fix any problems, so use it wisely. Okay. What he's saying here, and, and, and this is something that, that, that is very particular to just exactly digital photography, is that, and I'm not a photographer who will tell you necessarily to shoot as much as you can, but I will tell you to shoot more than what you think you need in the sense that um, 
you know, sometimes that that exposure correction of minus two thirds or minus one thirds will make a difference from the original image that you shot at the time that you shot it. Um, you know, sometimes uh, just moving your composition rather than shooting from eye level, you know, shooting at knee level or shooting at waist level might change the whole aspect of your photograph. So, ici, uh, Monsieur Cox parle de embrasser le, le, la, 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 la processus de, de, de refinement. C'est-à-dire que, euh, tu sais, pensez pas que vous allez avoir la photo que vous avez envisionnée le moment que vous êtes monté là et que vous prenez la première photo. C'est sûr et certain, tu sais, puis aujourd'hui, ça ne coûte rien. Je ne veux pas dire de prendre mille photos de la même sujet, mais prenez peut-être cinq ou six différentes photos en fonction de l'éclairage, en fonction de votre position. C'est au lieu d'apprendre toutes vos photos de, 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 de paysage au niveau de les yeux, peut-être à la niveau des, du taille ou le niveau de, du, de, des genoux, va faire complètement une différente image. Si on regarde ici, euh, il, a, il, a, il a pris justement la première euh, photo qu'il a pris, il a trouvé ça un peu trop chaotique. Fait que là, maintenant, qu'est-ce qu'il a fait? C'est qu'il a simplifié euh, l'image en fonction d'y aller prendre juste certains dunes au lieu d'y aller chercher tous les dunes euh, de sable dans son avant-plan. Euh, il a même pris une troisième où ce qui a fait une certaine euh, correction de couleur dans son post-traitement. Post euh, post il a aussi... Plus, tôt, plus tard, qu'est-ce qu'il a fait, c'est que de, le, le, de la photo couleur qui était très euh, ben, sombre ou dramatique, il l'a viré en noir et blanc pour sortir une meilleure, euh, une, une meilleure histoire. Puis c'est très, très, très en fonction euh, dynamique aussi. Uh, so here, what, what, what uh, Mr. Cox did was he took his first image, which he found was rather chaotic in the fact that there are very, very many peaks very many different, you know, different dunes here. <coughs> so instead what he did was, and you know what? I can actually see the image right now. Uh, what he did was, if you look at the second image here, what he did was he repositioned himself to get these peaks over here. Right there. Actually, to be more precise, it's this part of the image here when he moved and you'll notice that the skies changed as he moved and repositioned himself what he did was he took away all of the distracting parts of this image to create this image here then what he did okay after he went to get a simpler uh, composition what he did was he finalized the composition or the, or, or the, the color composition to be exactly this image from this image here. So what he's doing is he went and shot from here, here, and th basically he took this part of the image and kept this part of the image. And then he went one step further. He wanted to see what this dramatic color image would give him in black and white. And then now, basically, it's up to you as a photographer to see which one you prefer between these two. I think the black and white works very well. Okay. Um, now, the question is, which one works better? I, oh, to, At heart, I'm a black and white photographer, so I definitely like this image here. This image does talk to me. You see more of the light here than you do here, uh, aside from the fact that, you know, between the two images, there has been some time that has passed because you'll notice here the clouds have opened up and there's an actual ray of uh, sunlight that is piercing, the, the, the light that's piercing the clouds is actually lighting up the um, <coughs> the side here of this, of this particular dune here. Okay. Another, um, another suggestion here that Mr. Cox um, tells us is, to, is unify the message of your photograph. Uh, to take the strongest possible photos, it's important that as many elements as possible in an image add to your message. And if they don't, if the elements don't uh, add to your message, then they shouldn't be there to begin with. 
Okay? C'est as simple as that. Ici, l'astuce ici, c'est que euh, vous devez toujours le message que vous voulez produire dans votre, euh, votre image, dans votre histoire, les éléments qui sont les plus import importants devraient toujours avoir euh, l'importance du message. Si vous avez certains éléments qui ne portent pas euh, à le message, dans ce temps-là, il, il, il devrait être complètement enlevé, que ce soit en fonction de l'exposition, que ce soit en fonction du cadrage. Si on regarde ici cette photo-là, « This image here is kind of mediocre. » OK? Uh, « There's a little bit of movement. » I mean, that, that, that icicle or I, that ice rock that's there, it's just, it's, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it just doesn't make a good story here. OK? We're not exactly sure what, we're, what the photographer is trying to say here. So when we look at this particular image here, which we've just switched over to another um, rock of ice, and we've added more exposure time, more, more, more shutter speed, uh, to be able to get all of this beautiful movement here of the, of the rolling waves uh, from the ocean, you know, this and, and the lighting also uh, affects this This, uh, aside from the fact that this image here, the, the ice rock is kind of lost in the vastness of this image, while here we've put more emphasis on the ice rock and the tide of the oceans coming in and going out with their movement. Okay, so these are all, these are all natural, um, you know, landscapes and, and, and tips that you can use actually in a lot of your photography to begin with. Ask yourself questions. Um, you know, it's important to compose every photo uh, for its own merits, to make as many conscious decisions as possible in service of your emotional message. So, you know, you've got to be able to ask yourself is, do I, am, I, am I using the right focal length? Am I using the right aperture? Are, are, is my focus properly um, set up? Uh, in the image where I'm getting everything sharp. Uh, tu sais, il faut, 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 faut absolument que, que, que vous posez les questions uh, en fonction de la composition, uh, en fonction de l'équipement que vous utilisez. Est-ce que la focale est, est, est bien assez large pour qu'est-ce que je veux faire ou est-ce que je dois aller chercher plus, plus, plus près uh, pour, pour, pour cadrer uh, les éléments que je veux incorporer dans ce paysage-là? Typiquement, c'est sûr et certain, on cherche à avoir toujours une, 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 une focale assez courte pour aller chercher assez large, mais dans ce temps-là, est-ce que je suis à la bonne position? Est-ce que j'ai trop d'éléments dans mon avant-plan que j'aurais pu aller chercher en, 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 en rapprochant euh, plus près de le cadrage que je veux avoir? Fait que, tu sais, il faut, faut toujours, 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 toujours euh, se questionner puis, puis voir est-ce que je peux... Tu sais, parce que c'est sûr et certain... Vous ne sa savez pas la prochaine fois que vous pourriez retourner là pour reprendre une photo. So, you know, typically, and specifically when I, when I, when I, when I travel, with the little traveling that I've been doing lately, but when I travel, um, I don't know the next time that I might return to be able to shoot another image. And that's even locally, you know. Uh, last weekend I did a beautiful, I'm, and I'm still working on them, but... Um, I did a full night with, uh, actually, with a couple of members here of our, of our Facebook group, uh, Alex and, and Yvonne. We went and we did some um, uh, starry night uh, landscapes and just to be able to shoot the Milky Way. And, you know, I don't know the next time I'll be able to go down to Covey Hill, which is approximately an hour and a half from where I live um, uh, on the South Shore here of Montreal. Um, But, you know, I use different focal lengths because I was there and I wanted to incorporate different constellations. Uh, I wanted to crop out other constellations, but I wanted to have that Milky Way uh, on the horizon uh, for, the, you know, where the forest was. So, you know, and, and you'll see these coming up very soon as I finish them. But these are questions that, that, that we ask 
we have to be asking ourselves in every composition that we make and repeat them and repeat them and repeat them because the more that you repeat them the more that they it just you know it comes to you automatically and, and and again good lord please people move your feet you know don't just because i have a zoom i can crop closer because your zoom will kill your depth of field okay and the more you zoom the more shutter speed you're going to need to be able to freeze whatever is at infinity. Remember, and I've said this many, 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 many times, when you're talking 12 to, 20, to 12 to 30 megapixels, you have to be twice your focal length as far as shutter speed if you want that, that minuscule movement that might be the breeze um, that's, you know, moving the um, grass or moving the branches of the trees to be able to freeze them. So, you know, you know, starting off at, 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 at 16 millimeters and then zooming into 80 millimeters or 70 millimeters, you know, you're, you're, you're really cutting down your time on that too, on what you'll need. You know, you're, 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 um, when you're talking about the kit lenses like an 1855, you know, a 55 millimeter, that means you've got to be at least at one, one twenty-fifth of a second. Rather, with with the 18 millimeter, you can be at 1 40th of a second and still, you know, have a decently frozen image. So, you know, uh, try not necessarily to cop out and, and use your zoom. If you have to get closer, move in closer. Okay? Um, C'est-à-dire que, uh, s'il vous plaît, uh, je sais que, vous, you know, certains de vous ont des... Euh, zoom, mais un paysage normalement pour moi va être euh, en fonction de la focale je vais utiliser entre un, un, un 16 et un 35 mm excusez un 16 et un 35 mm je ne vais pas aller chercher un 50 mm je ne vais pas aller chercher un 100 mm ou un 200 mm les 100, les 200, les 400, les 600, ça, c'est pour l'animalier. Parce qu'oublie pas que plus, plus que vous utilisez un grand focal, plus que vous écrasez votre profondeur de champ à pratiquement rien. OK? So, dans ce cas-là, bougez vos pieds. Si vous n'êtes pas assez loin, euh, je veux dire pas assez proche, approchez. Si vous êtes juste pas assez loin, reculez-vous. Euh, reculez va plus loin pour aller chercher le cadrage que vous voulez. Vous trouvez que vous, vous manquez de l'espace à droite, bien, va le chercher. Bouge vers la droite. OK? La photographie, ce n'est pas juste d'être là puis prendre une photo telle que vous voyez ça. C'est de chercher d'avoir la bonne histoire de qu'est-ce que vous voulez représenter dans votre photo. Et, après ça, et ça, c'est quelque chose que je suis très, 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 très difficile là-dessus, Apprenez vos équipements comme il faut. Apprendre les défauts que vos équipements introduisent. C'est très important. Parce que c'est sûr et certain, si vous ne connaissiez pas déjà qu'est-ce que vos boîtiers font ou que vos objectifs font, ça ne vaut pas la peine d'acheter un autre objectif ou un autre boîtier plus, euh, plus récent. Parce que si vous n'avez pas passé le temps sur l'équipement que vous avez déjà, vous ne sauriez pas quoi faire avec les nouveautés qui viennent avec la nouvelle boîtier ou le nouvel objectif. So, puis je suis, je sais que je suis, on, peut, on pourrait dire que je suis un vendeur pourri dans ce sens-là, sens c'est que, tu sais, je suis le premier à dire à quelqu'un, apprends ton boîtier tel quel. Oui, peut-être c'est un D90, oui, peut-être c'est un T5i, puis aujourd'hui on est rendu à T8, euh, mais... Si vous ne si vous passez pas le temps à apprendre vos, 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 vos équipements tels quels avec les boutons et tout, c'est sûr et certain que vous n'irez pas plus loin avec la, nouvelle, la nouveauté qui vient de sortir. OK? What I'm saying here is, is exactly what you see here from Mr. Cox. Know your equipment. OK? Uh, a photographer, no matter what you put in his hands, should be able to shoot with whatever is in his hands. OK? A photographer... A, 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 a die-hard photographer, no matter what camera is in his hands, it's not the camera that makes the photo, it's the photographer that makes the photo, that creates that photo, photo, photograph. Okay? So, 
whatever body, whatever lens you have, whether you have a kit lens, an 1850, uh, sorry, an 1855, 3.5, 5.6, understand what those apertures do, what those focal lengths do on the bodies that you have, and above all, know where to find your buttons and your functions. Because believe me, the moment you switch from one generation to a newer generation, you're going to have newer buttons, you're going to have newer functions. And if you don't already know what the limits of the equipment you have are now, you'll never get to the limits of having a better, or, or what a better, the limits of what a better piece of equipment gives you. Because you'll, you, you will never have seen what the worst of the older ones were to begin with. So you don't know what that new generation of, of equipment is going to give you more of. Okay? So, you know, try your ISOs. Try your shutter speeds. Try your different apertures. Try your different focal lengths. See what they give you. See, and, and if you have to reprogram, feel free to reprogram your, your buttons. If, if, if you find that the, the predetermined buttons or the predesigned buttons are just not working for you. Okay, I mean this is something. This this is not even in landscape photography. This is in any photography. Whether you're doing portrait, whether you're doing macro, whether know what your buttons do, know what your functions of your cameras do, and know what the functions, the embedded functions in your lenses, because some lenses have um, uh, function buttons on them too. Okay, uh, and learn different techniques. Learn from other photographers what they do. Okay. But, you know, and, and, and I get a lot of people, a lot of people who take my excursions, and they just don't know how to find certain functions. And these are the functions that should be, um, I mean, this should be the basics. You know, how to change your autofocus, how to change your autofocus point, where to position your autofocus, how do I change that? Uh, you know, the difference between AFL and, A, uh, sorry, AFL and AEL. Why would I use an AEL versus an AFL? And when would I use the AFL? For those of you who don't know, autofocus uh, locking, um, yeah, uh, your autofocus lock or your auto exposure lock. Qu'est-ce que je suis en train de parler ici? C'est que, c'est, sachez tous vos, vos boutons, comment changer vos, vos mires de mise au point, quelle, 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 quelle fonction de mise au point est-ce que je vais utiliser quand j'utilise l'automatique? Est-ce que je vais utiliser la, 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 grand, la grand zone complet du capteur? Est-ce que je vais aller chercher un point simple? Euh, est-ce que je suis mieux? Puis si, si je veux utiliser un mode MF, est-ce que l'appareil photo a une fonction qui, qui m'aide dans le mode manuel de mise au point? Le mise au point manuel, je veux dire. C'est, c'est quoi la différence entre le AEL ou le AFL? Et quand est-ce que je vais utiliser ces deux modes-là? C'est, je veux dire, ces deux fonctions-là. Ce n'est pas des modes, c'est des fonctions. OK? Euh, puis, plus que vous suivez euh, ces, 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 ces genres de, 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 de épisodes là euh, plus, que vous, plus que je vais l'expliquer plus profondément. Uh, the more, and, and believe me, the more, and I'm going to be putting up videos and stuff about autofocus and about manual focus and about auto expo, uh, exposure lock versus auto uh, focus lock, focusing lock, different focusing zones and different focusing modes that we're going to be using um, over time. At, at a certain point, I will, I'll share all of my techniques. I will share all of my, um, you know, everything I've learned over the last 40 odd years from Uncle Bob, from Uncle Lou, from my dad, and from my photography teachers. Um, you know, I, I, I hope to share all of this with you guys. Okay. Um, one thing before we do leave, because we are already a little bit past our time, uh, that I did want, I found a, a interesting article here uh, at the same uh, photographylife.com, and I'll be posting all of these up. I got to just take the time to put all of the descriptions and comments uh, in the uh, in the videos, but um, there was an article here called uh, "Double the Distance Method." Okay, what is double the distance method when we're talking about um, focusing? Okay, uh, and this article here was again again uh, an article from Mr. Cox, which is the double distance uh, method is a way to mi- uh, maximize the, photo- f- uh, the the photo's depth of field. For focusing at the proper distance in a scene. 
your goal is to equalize the uh, photo's foreground and the background sharpness, okay? Uh, it's relatively an easy technique to apply in the field to start. Look at the closest part, uh, the, sorry, the closest object in your photo and ask yourself how far away is it, specifically from the plane of the camera sensor, which I'll cover more in a moment, da 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 okay? Then focus at twice that distance. So, basically here, what we're talking about, so, ici, pour dire, c'est, le, le, le méthode que ce, ce photographe ici explique, c'est qu'il écrit comment, euh, c'est quoi le, le, le double de, c'est quoi la méthode de doubler la distance de mon mise au point, OK? Fait, qu'est-ce qu'il fait réellement, c'est que si on place notre image, uh, sorry, notre image, je regarde ici le, le capteur d'image. Si on, on, on installe notre, notre euh, appareil photo avec sa grand angle, puis qu'on on voit que le, 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 cette, cette euh, voyons, gazon ici, euh, la lame de gazon qui est là, c'est notre, premier, c'est notre sujet le plus près, disons à peu près dans ce cas, dans ce cas ici, euh, un mètre. Dans ce temps-là, qu'est-ce que je vais faire? C'est que je vais faire un euh, mise au point un mètre plus loin de cette première mètre. So, si je veux que ça soit net ici, qu'est-ce que je vais faire? C'est que je vais faire mon mise au point, euh, justement, un mètre plus loin que ça. OK? So, again, I uh, just want to see. So, here, just to re-explain it. If we're shooting an image... And at our, our at, our, at whatever focal length that we are using, what we are trying to do is see where that first element that is in that 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 is in our frame, and calculate that distance from the camera, doubling it to where my focus should be. So if this blade of grass is one meter from the sensor here on the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus at two meters away. And this foreground here will stay in focus. An easier way, my technique I think is a little bit easier, and that is basically, let me see here if I can get a picture here. Hold on. Uh, let's do something extra. Uh, rule. And this is just... Uh, I want to just see what it's going to give me. Here. I want to see if I can get a actual rule of thirds for landscape. There we go. So what I do, let's say, for instance, let's take this image right here. Okay, perfect example right here. Let this load. I'll let you guys go right after this. Is that it? Okay. So if we look... Oh, that's why. Okay, let's go back. Let's get a better image. This is a good image, I think. Is it? Yeah, that's a perfect image. So let's take take this image here. So... If we have, now you'll notice actually here, there's a perfect example of an, Im, an image that was missed. And the reason it's missed is because the subject that the photographer is, is focusing on is too far forward, too close to me, to be able to get a sharp background, okay? Because this image is too close. But typically, what I would have done in this particular image is, and, 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 and you don't have to use this grid as a compositional aid, use it as a focusing aid. And what I'm trying to say here is that, well, this is a bad example. Let me get a better example. Um, actually, that would work. Oh, here, let's use this example right here. Okay, so the 
where your first third is, see what where it hits as far as distance goes. So typically, what I want to do at this particular point here is if I want the grass here in the front, I will focus wherever this line falls in distance. So that means I would actually, you could use this tree. This tree is a good example here, even though it is the first tree in this uh, but the distance that this photographer shot this image at, he adjusted his distance so that the line falls at the right third distance, because don't forget, your depth of field from your focal point is one-third in front, two-thirds behind. So if I'm using my F11 and my F16, now that's something else I should, I should explain to you too, is that when I'm shooting, I'm always trying to get my lowest ISO based on my smallest aperture. Now, I'm not saying the smallest aperture of my lens. I'm saying my smallest choice of aperture, which is either an f11 or an f16. And typically, sometimes it's even f8 or f11 more so than the 16. Okay. Uh, fait, qu'est-ce que je suis en train d'expliquer ici, c'est que comparé à, 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 à Monsieur Cox qui, 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 a, qui a expliqué en doublant la distance pour faire mon mise au point. Uh, Qu'est-ce que je fais ici, c'est que puis vous n'avez même pas besoin d'utiliser la, la règle de tiers que vous pouvez faire afficher dans votre appareil, dans votre viseur ou sur votre écran à l'arrière de votre appareil. Ce n'est pas pour la composition en tant que telle, mais pour te montrer où que vous devrez faire la mise au point pour que ça soit net un tiers devant et un tiers, de, euh, un tiers derrière. So, un tiers derrière, ça veut dire que tout ça ici, en arrière, va devenir... Euh, va, va, va être aussi net que mon avant-plan. Fait que dans ce temps-là, qu'est-ce que je fais? C'est que en regardant où est le, la distance que ce, cette ligne-là tombe dessus, bien, je ferai mon mise au point genre dans ce coin ici. Pour que justement, j'aille, puis pas fondre de chance, on sait très bien que c'est de où est mon mise au point, un tiers devant, deux tiers en arrière. OK? Euh, je parlais aussi que quand je fais, le, moi, en temps, en temps normal, quand je fais le paysage, je cherche toujours d'avoir le, 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 mon, mon ISO minimum possible en fonction de mon ouverture et que ma vitesse va figer quelques petits mouvements qui pourraient arriver dans les gazons, dans les branches de, de l'arbre. C'est-à-dire que, et ma préférence en tant que telle d'ouverture pour le paysage, ça va tomber, ça peut être... Euh, souvent F8, F11 ou F16. Puis, dépendant quel objectif que j'utilise, si j'utilise ma 16 mm ou mon 28 mm, c'est mon 28, je vais plutôt aller chercher mon F11, mais un 16 mm, peut-être, j'irai chercher un F8. En sachant que, tu sais, F8 et F11, normalement, c'est les ouvertures les plus nettes, les plus performantes en tant que telles euh, de la plage d'ouverture euh, dans l'objectif, dépendant quel focal que j'utilise. So with that, people, I will leave you for the challenge for next week. And uh, that will be uh, to shoot anything and everything landscape, be it urban, natural, night, be it... Uh, just go out there, have some fun, shoot a couple of... You know, go to the park or, or, or if you have a forest around near you, uh, you know, it could be a sunset un coucher de soleil, un forêt, euh, mais je veux voir qu'est-ce que vous pouvez faire en fonction du euh, paysage et je vous souhaite un très belle fin de semaine. Euh, bonne semaine. On se rejoint ici à 8h mardi soir pour parler de euh, la, la restauration de photos euh, en fonction de, de numérisation jusqu'au... Euh, je vais essayer aussi... Ben, je, vais essayer, je, vais, je vais concentrer un peu plus sur le, la restauration en post-traitement en utilisant soit Lightroom ou euh, Photoshop. Euh, mais je sais qu'il y a beaucoup de monde qui ont des, euh, des questionnements là-dessus. Si vous avez des questions, s'il vous plaît, euh, mettez-les dans les commentaires de cette vidéo-là ou me l'envoyez par euh, Messenger, euh, courriel, ou justement, je vais vous afficher euh, si vous voulez me contacter. Ah, oh, excusez. Z, there you go. So, you can reach me at my email address or check me out at linktree uh, slash aj.gentile. 
for my social media con uh, um, contact points. Um, again, uh, I wish you guys a fantastic week and a fantastic um, weekend. We will meet up again here uh, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock where I'll be talking about uh, restoring photos. Uh, I will talk a little bit about uh, the, the scanning part, uh, but I will mainly be showing you a little bit, uh, some tips and tricks on um, on the actual, uh, you know, post-treatment in Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, I'm still in the process of investigating Darktable and a couple of other softwares, and hopefully I'll be able to put up some episodes on that too. Um, <clears throat> I'm in the process of also building up two or three recorded episodes that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be releasing very soon. Still have a little bit of editing to do on that. In the meantime, I wish you all a wonderful weekend, fantastic week coming up, and uh, just enjoy, have fun. Photography has got to be fun. Say, veux que vous soyez, say, veux que vous ayez la fun quand vous faites votre photographie. Et pour moi, la photographie, ma, moi, c'est ma passion, la photographie, mais c'est, et hey, puis justement, qu'est-ce que je veux que ça soit pour tout le monde. Tout le monde que, 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 que je lui montre. Euh, la photographie, je veux qu'il y ait un, un, un goût de la passion que j'ai aussi pour la photographie, que j'ai réussi à avoir de mon père, de, de mes oncles, euh, de, de les gens que je fais de la photographie avec à tous les jours aussi. So, uh, bonne semaine, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you guys here in a couple of days. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.